Today's political news. Joining us is Congressman Adam Kinzinger. He's a Republican. Uh, he's also a supporter of the Jeb Bush campaign. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. A couple of quick questions. Uh, do you think that he is, Cruz, is eligible to be president given the fact he was born in Canada? Yeah, I think so. I've never really bought into the uh, the whole birther ideas, whether it was with President Obama or Ted Cruz. I think he's eligible. And, you know, with this court case, we'll probably be able to put that to bed. Now, I wish Ted Cruz wouldn't run for president, but that's completely different than uh, whether or not he's eligible. And I think he is. Where do you stand on this uh, escalation and this fight with Apple right now with Donald Trump suggesting that uh, the country, the people should boycott Apple? It agrees to cooperate with the FBI into this investigation that I phoned from that San Bernardino terrorist. Trump will say anything he needs to say to get headlines, and this is something that's going to get him headlines, you know, boycotting Apple. Now, I disagree with Apple's decision, and I, I disagree with it very intensely. They need to allow the FBI to get into this phone. It's the right thing to do for the, for the country, for terrorism, uh, for defeating this evil. But, you know, look, Donald Trump to say we need to boycott the entire company of Apple. I mean, where are people going to go? They'll buy Samsung. Samsung's not an American company. Apple is. So, you know, Donald Trump's made a huge deal about buying American and bringing jobs back. And, and for him just to make this is, is uh, again, he's just trying to get headlines. That's what he does. That's how he runs for president. And finally, a quick co comment from you on uh, Trump the other night saying he would be neutral as far as deciding whether he's with the Palestinians or with the Israelis <laughs> in negotiations for some Israeli-Palestinian peace agreement. He wants to take a neutral stance as of now. He wants to work to achieve it. But right now he says he's neutral. Your reaction? Again, uh, Donald Trump, when you really listen to what he has to say, in foreign policy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, he really doesn't. When he says his, his response to ISIS is to just knock the blank out of them, uh, that's not a mature discussion of foreign policy. And it's obviously not an understanding of foreign policy when you say you're going to be neutral between the Palestinians and the Israelis. When you show daylight between the United States and Israel, that has ramifications all over the Middle East, not just in that specific conflict. So, again, you know, look, Donald Trump, if he becomes our nominee, God forbid, and if he becomes president really needs to surround himself with people that actually understand how the world works and actually understands foreign policy. When you say God forbid if he becomes the Republican nominee, if he were the Republican nominee, a congressman, could you support him? I, I don't know. I can't answer that yet. You know, I, I had come to a point where I said maybe, uh, and then I saw him in the last debate, you know, literally a couple people the audience and he gets all thin-skinned about it and uh, freaks out when he says George W. Bush is responsible for 9-11, uh, didn't do enough to protect our country, and then he pra praises Vladimir Putin and falls right into Putin's honey trap, basically, of saying, I'm going to compliment Trump and Trump's going to compliment me back. Again, I don't know if that's who we need as commander-in-chief. I don't think he's going to be the nominee, uh, but if he does, I'd have a long, hard decision to make personally. I'd put my country above my party any day. There are a lot of uh, voters out there. Uh, certainly we saw it in, in New Hampshire. Uh, presumably we're going to see it in South Carolina, later maybe in, in Nevada. Uh, he's, he, he potentially could get a lot of momentum out of these next few contests, right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, look, there are people that are understandably very angry, and he reflects that anger. The difference is a leader needs to show anger on behalf of people. The middle class has lost $2,300 in the last seven years. I'm angry about that. A leader doesn't need to be angry on behalf of himself, and that's what you see in Donald Trump. When he gets mad, it's because he's personally offended. That's not the traits of a leader. So, look, he's got a strong 35 percent. He very well may win South Carolina, but I think that's pretty much the top of Republicans that are going to support him. Those that aren't supporting him now, I don't see coming around on the Trump bandwagon. I've talked to a lot of them, and they're not, uh, they're not in on the Trump thing. If uh, Michael Bloomberg were to run as a third-party candidate, let's say Trump uh, were the uh, Republican nominee, would you be more inclined to, to – I, I assume you're not going to vote for the Democratic nominee, whether it's Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton, but would you be more inclined to vote for Michael Bloomberg? Because a lot of people are looking at that possibility. Well, if Michael Bloomberg runs, he's going to help the Republicans, so I hope it's not Donald Trump as our nominee. That's a good thing. Uh, no, I don't know if I can support Trump. I definitely won't support the Democrats, and I, I'm not intending to support Michael Bloomberg. So, you know, look, it's, that's a lot of uh, what-ifs. Uh, at this point, we have a lot of primary season to get through, and, uh, and I don't think Donald Trump's...
probably going to be our nominee. I, I think, you know, Republican voters, they're understandably very upset, but I think when they look beyond just the, I guess, tone of Donald Trump and into the words or, frankly, lack thereof, uh, on the very great town hall you guys had last night, uh, he didn't say a lot. He just said it with an interesting tone. And so uh, I don't think he's going to be our nominee. I'm not overly worried about it. All right. Uh, we'll see what happens in South Carolina tomorrow, then Nevada, then uh, obviously Super Tuesday. We've got a lot more questions to ask you, Congress, and don't go away. We're going to continue our assessment of what's going on right now in this race for the White House. Much more with Congressman Adam Kinzinger, our guest, Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He's a Jeb Bush supporter. Uh, Congressman, uh, he declined to jump into the middle of this war, uh, Jeb Bush, the war of words yesterday between Trump and the Pope, saying he personally wouldn't question anyone's Christianity for that matter. What's your take on that exchange between Trump and the Pope yesterday? I've seen it all now. I mean, I, I've seen it all. Uh, you know, look, I, I do think, and I'm not a Catholic, I'm Protestant, so I'm sensitive in saying this. I do think the pro Pope, you know, overstepped a little bit by getting involved in American politics. Uh, I think his point about, you know, people who are Christians need to have a softer tone. It doesn't mean you have to have softer politics, but it means we have to understand and have compassion for people that are in tough positions. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, and I think the Republican Party, uh, we need to understand that there are people in very tough situations that uh, are desperate, and we need to be the party that's able to reach out to them and, and, and bring them up. So, uh, look, th there's no doubt in my mind that Donald Trump Trump's tone hasn't been great at all. Uh, we spent the last segment talking about that, but the Pope probably shouldn't have gotten involved in the politics here, and I think he's since kind of rectified that. Jeb Bush said uh, last night uh, he'd want U.S. troops to embed with the Iraqi army. You've told us in the past you don't think putting U.S. troops on the ground in Iraq right now is necessarily a good idea. I know you're a veteran of both the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Do you, you agree with Jeb Bush's position about embedding U.S. troops with the Iraqi army right now? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I do think we need to have a, a ground presence there. We're not, nobody's asking for two or 300,000 troops at, you know, now. Uh, we need to destroy ISIS, whatever force that takes. Uh, but it, there is a fact that when you put American troops in with Iraqi military, even with Kurdish military, uh, Sunni uh, tribesmen, any of these kinds of groups, it stiffens their spine. They see American leadership. This is what our guys are trained to do really well. And, uh, and they're inspired because we're the best warriors out there. And so I think this is a key piece of pushing back and destroying this cancer that, you know, we're seeing is spreading to Libya, Tunisia, Afghanistan, all over the world. We got to destroy these folks and whatever it takes to do it, we got to use. Speaking of Libya, we're learning that uh, U.S. F-15 struck at ISIS training camp in Libya. Is this an expansion of U.S. military action against ISIS? And does the president have the, the, the authorization now to escalate this war against ISIS into Libya? Yeah, first off, uh, this probably is an expansion, and it's a necessary expansion. We have to destroy ISIS where they exist. We've done this basically before when this was al-Qaeda in Iraq. We pushed them back. We rolled them back. And even the president in his re-election said al-Qaeda's on the ropes. Uh, since then, this new al-Qaeda, ISIS, has grown and metastasized all over the place. This needs to be expanded. In terms of does the president have the authorization, I believe he does uh, under what happened after 9-11. But at the end of the day, I think Congress should come and give him a use of force authorization without limitations, though. That's the key. We're not going to tie the hands of the next president uh, with what this president has requested. He's requested a time limit and a prohibition on the use of ground troops. I will give, I have an authorization to use of military force that I wrote that says the president has the authority to destroy ISIS wherever they exist by whatever means necessary, basically. Uh, that's what Congress should give him. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know if we can get to 218 on an unlimited AUMF. Congressman Adam Kinziger of Illinois. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. You bet, Wolf. Thanks. Take our, care. Our th